welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, I'm showing up today to talk about The Altitude of Prayer, a wonderful book by Joel Goldsmith, of whom I am following the infinite way material religiously, and, and I have found my niche with Joel. And I say hi to Joel today. I say hi to Jesus, to Elijah, to Moses, to Buddha, to John, to everyone who's given us mystical energy in our path over the next, over the last thousands of years. All of them have joined me and they all join you when you come together and ask for guidance. They contribute to the work that you do in spirit. So I give thanks to all the mystics. And you know, mystics are interesting. I Googled the other day and I had to laugh. I got pages and pages of artists, writers, musicians. Of course, not everyone is a teacher, not everyone is a prophet, but to be a mystic, you can, you can be an artist, you can create a song, you can lift humanity with your energy, with your mission, and whatever God has given you to do. So to all the mystics on paper that you can see visually uh, in prayer that work with us, thank you. I'd like to get on with the altitude of prayer. When I think of living here, um, in the preference to the altitude of prayer, it is mentioned that we all want to speak so God hears us. Kind of, all of us want that. We want to be heard, we want to figure out how do we pray. Throughout history, mankind, in every country, in every spiritual practice, non-spiritual practice, has hungered for, how do I get through to God? What do I do? So Joel, in the altitude of prayer, gives us methods. He uses reasoning, logic, very practical steps to contact the source. And he's very good at explaining how hard this plane is and what we have to cut through to get there. And what we have to cut through, my friends, is a plane where when we were born, we woke up into fear, our parents, our churches, our schools, our government. Everywhere we looked, there were rules. There were games to play by to stay out of trouble. But they were warnings. They were fear-based. And it was pretty frightening. As Joel said in his first prayer that he learned, and it's one I learned, and I'll bet you all have learned this one, now I lay me down to sleep. And we prayed for getting through the night. If I die before I wake, there's a pleasant thought. And then you prayed for everyone in your household and you hoped when you went to sleep that that would do the trick and that God would take over. But in a sense, you were surrendering to God by saying, I rest in thee. However, there was that sense of death. And so we've got to really understand that term, death, because there isn't any. And it was so comforting to read in this book, The Altitude of Prayer, that the transition is actually easy. It says this form is like the apple on a tree, like a tree, like leaves falling down. We are a form. Our bodies are forms, and we are not in it. We are the invisible spirit that uses the body, the mind, to share God's glory. We are instruments. So if you can think of your body, this form, as a form that transitions and that goes on, and Joel said something cute I'd never heard before, you get a better body and a better everything. Well, that's nice to know that the work that you've done steps into an improvement zone. And it also, he's so comforting about, think of all the folks you've lost and you've suffered over, and we definitely do. We don't like to lose folks that we're safe and familiar with, but just try to remember they are absolutely fine. They did not die. There is no life to death. We're all whole, all the time. Before Abraham was, I am. And when I think of the eternal life, that we did not have a beginning, we will not have an ending, that eternal life, immortality, is the sum total of the essence of us. And I love it the way Joel words that God created us as individualized gods 
that he could communicate with and create his own glory here. So we're individualized expression. We've been given talents, goals, missions. They work slowly in our evolution on every parenthesis for every time we are here. But the fact that we've been created, that we have a cause, every one of us has a cause. We have been created, and the goal of prayer is to have the Christ speak through us and be us. And that's not such a big order. When you really think about the trials that we've had, what the earth plane has told us, it's told us, gee, it's powerful to be rich, it's powerful to have credentials, it's powerful to live here and control the earth plane, to do all of these things. We're given these, you know, like these dangling bananas. Go after this one, it's gonna work, and then go after this one. And it's what we, we are born into. The world of illusion, the world of what looks like power, but it's the human dimension, so it has absolutely no power because it's based in emptiness and it's based in fear. And my friends, the human plane is also based in loneliness because as each one of these illusions, we capture them, we live them, we think that they're perfect. As we take them on, they fall short, and then we're empty. And then we say, okay, that worked for a while. We don't begrudge it. We move on to the next gem. We say, well, this is where I have moved to in my consciousness, because we are here to purify our consciousness. We are here to go home to the Father's house. We have that so built in because we've been, giving, been given the cause. We have been given the communication that God has given us, but we need to be quiet to hear it. So the ultimate prayer, as Joel says, is silence. That's the ultimate prayer. As we beg for things, now I lay me down to sleep. The 23rd Psalm, I go after what I want. Please fulfill me, God. And then he leadeth me beside still water. So as we go for what we think we want, we are blocking God. Our separation looms because we're saying, God, I know more than you do about what would be good for me. So listen to me, please, because I have power, of which we have none. So God puts up with us, and I'm sure it is asleep while we carry on about our needs and our wishes about health, about abundance, about relationships, about anything that we can imagine would be awesome. That's not how it works. There are greater things than this that you need to listen to. So listening is the art of raising our consciousness, of coming home to the Father, of coming home to our original cause, which never had a birth and will never have an ending. So we finally begin to sort of see how all these things we thought would give us glory, they kind of don't work out or they don't feed us, they don't fill us with joy. And they start to diminish. And then one day, in our exhaustion, in our crawling in within from our own suffering that we have taken in, and no fault here, we took it all in, we absorbed it, and we played the game of this dimension in its fear mode, and we find that we reach in, we ask, and we listen to Jesus and we listen to Elijah, we listen to Buddha, we listen to the saints and the mystics for advice. Oh, and the advice is there. Come on home to your father's house. Jesus said 2,000 years ago, he speaks to me and I have come that you will know that what I am and have is yours. He did not want a crown. He did not want to be organized. He wanted to be a mystic, which he was, and he wants all to be thinking that way, that we live silently and we live sacredly. He went off for those 40 days in prayer. He knew how to pray. He knew his father was the boss. And he only, only listened to that voice. That's where he grew and that's what his message was and that was what his mission was as he reincarnated 
and showed us that there was no death. Now, thinking of that word reincarnation, there is a little glib in the altitude of prayer that says we really don't reincarnate. We've incarnated as a spirit, as a perfect soul. So that soul doesn't have to come back in the parenthesis unless it has more work to do, unless the ego needs more dissolving. That's okay, we've all done it probably many times. I can remember some. If we need this experience, if our egos are still alive and alert and looking for something that is fear-based because we can't help it, because we're working hard to heal our consciousness. So no blame here. We're on a journey and we're trying to get back to the Father's house. So we need compassion for ourselves. Now let's think about compassion for our fellow man. The way we come home is to know I and my Father are one. Now Joel said, when I discovered that God was working with me and spoke to me, it was when I could now see my brothers and sisters in the same light. It took me to come to God, to be blessed, to be in peace, to see that all my brothers and sisters, because we're all one and all connected, one soul, but then I could give it to my brothers and my sisters. And I do and I have with my infinite way movement, with my writings, with my teaching, with my love of my students. We have to come home and the way we do it is loving our enemies, our friends, those we love. But the big hook might be loving our enemies because think of all the folks that bug you. Think of all the wars in the world that think they're won by who shot the most folks. Guns don't heal. That's not winning a war. Winning a war is blessing the enemy. Our country, I see wonderful signs of that working, of people joining. I just saw something about Japan this morning and an earthquake and how all these troops and police forces were going to help. We see so many signs of, of togetherness, of joining in oneness, that we're in this together, we're here to help one another. And that is his key to having the spiritual life, walking on water, having miracles happen. And, and Joel says, gosh, if 20 times a day for 10 seconds, you could remember, go before me, God. I know who I am. I, you are me, I am you, we are joined. All is perfect. If we could do that 20 times a day, Joel said, your life would change. I'm ready. I've been trying it. I've been working it. It's kind of exciting because the altitude of prayer gives us methods. It's not only practical, because Joel was very practical. It shows reason, but it shows spiritual principles. Now, those principles have to do with the laws of God. And here are the laws. There is one power, omnipotence. There's one presence, omnipresence. And there is one wisdom, omniscience. There's only one voice that can actually tell you exactly what to do. You'll be hearing your advice from everybody, and that's all good. We're all trying to help one another, but basically, really, the commitment to the still, small voice is the essence of prayer. We want to know how to speak to God so he hears us, but if we can get it that God made us in his likeness and in his, his image, and he individualized us so he could create a relationship with himself through the glory that we express as servants to make the world better and to close time. I find this maybe, I always say that, gee, I've read the best book ever, but I'm not too sure this one hasn't really changed my life a lot. He helps us with false appetites. He says, please correct God, correct anything that is not working for me that would purify me. How can I be a better instrument? We all, Joel says, we all deny that. And sure, it's our egos. We don't want to admit maybe that we have flaws, but we do. So I think the humility, humility is not thinking you've got a better idea than God. It's being the humble servant. It's saying, I do want to get out of the way. I want you to guide me. I am listening because if I do, I can have the world. I can have the power. I can be famous. I could have everything. Think about that because that's what we all maybe want to do. We want to make a mark here. We want to change the world. We want to be servants. We want to teach. We want to learn. We want to change life for the better. That's the only reason that we're here. And I say that because 
When you think of how we love our families and how we get all embraced in our little units and with all our friends, and that becomes our life, but that's not what we're here to do only. We're here to make the world a better place, to serve the good of all. We need to be servants. We need to go outside of our little circles. And we need to serve and think big. Can I teach? Can I paint? What can I do? And what is my mission, God? A good question for God. Please ask, what is my mission? Why am I here? You will notice all these periods and these processes that you've had churning over ideas and being in certain periods in your life where you thought that was it, and it was, and it was perfect. Don't knock any place you've ever been. It's all added to you growing and changing and coming home. So bless everything you've learned. Bless all those bad detours that ended nowhere. They were perfect because you learned from them. You tried another route because God was in charge. And you know why they fall short? Because you're in this plane, this dimension, is teaching you all these false ideas of what will make you happy. And so, of course, you're gonna try them. We're all innocent here. We're not victims, however. We were given that spark and that guidance and that voice. So, the trick to the altitude of prayer is listening. And that still small voice, my God, it cannot just be the still small voice, my friends. It can be a hunch, a feeling, an idea. Something comes to you and it's like, you know God is on the field. You know you're being guided, you're being loved. And who does not want to be loved and feel companionship? Let me get back to that. Companionship, we're never alone. I find sometimes when I'm walking, I'm, t I'm talking away to God and I laugh at myself hoping nobody's noticing because it, it's so comforting to carry on and have fun and say, okay, here we are, and these are my concerns, and this is what I wanna know about. Holy Spirit, I don't know what this is about. Sometimes I don't even know what to pray for. So I'm coming to you saying, if you can give me a hint as to what would be a good goal for me, because you know me, you made me, I am, you've caused me to be here. Your mission was to put me here like every human being for a mission, for a purpose to bring God's glory home because that's why you created all of us. You're sharing your relationship with us to bring power to the word of God, to the life of total divine love. And total divine love is really the, the scoop that there's no feeling this earth plane can give us like the total divine love that when we share it, we have it. When we get two and three gathered together, the power is not in the temple, it's not in the building, it's not in the church, it's the energy of two and three beautiful souls in consciousness coming together. And you feel it. And your friends feel it when you forgive them. Let's say they're being obnoxious and you just, there are no words for how you can maybe respond to anything, but in your heart you could say forgive them for they know not what they do. Bring them to you, God. You do that sacredly and silently, and believe me, my friends, they hear it. They feel it. They feel your love for them. And that's your ticket home, friends, loving one another, remembering that your consciousness is their consciousness, that everything that you've been given, they've been given, whether they know it or not, does not matter, because you must trust that what you have, not only they have, but sooner than later, they will exhaust all of their ego, the big I that goes out for look at me. The I, the, the Orientals often peel an onion and they take one at a time from what Joel says and they get down to the base and you got the little I down there and that's the real I. After you get rid of all the illusions and all the glamour and all the things you think are gonna make you happy, you come back to being a servant being someone who then is open, you're aware, there's somebody there. And believe me, the love that you will feel when you communicate humbly, humbly. Humility is not wanting anything. Please don't go for things. Don't make a, a grocery list of all the things you think you should have because God has the better idea. He's full of love and spirit. And if you trust his guidance, it can be something that can blow you away. It can be so overwhelmingly awesome and overwhelmingly beautiful. The sharing 
of two and three gathered together. We're all here to magnify God's grace. Now let's talk about grace. Grace is not rest in peace and be quiet and just don't expect anything. Grace is lovely, but it's active and it's vital and it's energetic and it's got power to it. Grace has power. And not only does it speak, but when you share and when you give, the feeling in the heart, everything is from the mind to the heart. We can prattle, we can do uh, prayers of petition. If they're only here and they're repetitious, no one's gonna be hearing anything. But if they're from the heart, even a prayer of petition, if it's a, it's a, a rote, if it comes from deep within you, it will be heard. And let me get to the pure heart. The pure heart is for those who genuinely pour their hearts out. Their prayer life is rich, it's full, it's humble, it's beseeching. It's the heart is so active in, in a prayer life that works. When you wanna be heard, you know, repetition and rote and all of that is fine, but it's not gonna be what will bring you what you want. If you wanna be heard, if you want results, be humble, speak from the heart, be pure in mind and spirit and soul. Listen to sermons, read spiritual literature, go to the masters, get every possible way to be inspired. Go for all of that, that's, that's wonderful. Get your inspiration as you try to go deeper and deeper and deeper. It's what makes life work, my friends. So I'm gonna wind down here on The Altitude of Prayer by Joel Goldsmith, who was the creator of The Infinite Way, who was a Christian science practitioner, a businessman, but he didn't wanna organize, he didn't wanna advertise. He lived mystically and had miracles because of his private life. He learned to see others sacredly and secretly. He knew no judgment of others, and let me wind down a bit with no judgment. You know, the grace of God holds no one in condemnation. No one goes to jail, no one's guilty. The thief on the cross was just, he did not know what he was doing. He was given grace. All of us are given the grace of God. None of us are held in bondage because love doesn't know how to do that. So that's where if we're instruments of God, we need to be doing that for our brothers and sisters. And Tim, I'm not sure of the time. Can you give me a, can you say some? I can't, five minutes? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we need to think that if God can give us that grace, and Joel can say, when I found God and I went into that beautiful vortex and came back and wept because I knew divine love, there was no way that I couldn't give it to anyone and everyone and not see where they were, if they were dense, if they were, they were not in a vacuum, they weren't open, they weren't empty. When we go into prayer, we need to empty out everything we think is right for us. We empty, we go for the silence, we let the prattle happen if it has to. We don't judge ourselves as we try very hard to come home. I think Joel says this work is hard. I don't think it's for sissies, but none of us are. We're all powerful folks. We all have strong hearts and souls. We're all very powerfully strong people. We came in as spirits. We're in a form that will disappear and will come back maybe, maybe it won't have to. Maybe we'll, we will have gotten it that our egos have dissolved and that the tests that we've had, they're not coming anymore because we figured it out and we find miracles. And the miracles are the surrender. The miracles are when we stop asking. The miracles come when we know nothing and we don't pray for anything. And you know, they say down in history, prayers have not been answered for a lot of folks who beg for things. And it's been a dilemma for a lot of folks who think, and that's in their ignorance. They don't know that just asking for something specific is not what it's about. Let your heart surrender to what's best for someone. Let's say someone is not well. What is best for that person? Only God knows. God knows the life of a sparrow. 
think about that. He knows reincarnation because he knows when something dies, it comes back. That's reincarnation. That's, that's what we must think about God. We must think about the fact that we are here to love one another. And it's so simple and it's so hard because there are times we want to judge, we want to condemn, because that feels right. We've been taught to condemn. We've been taught that there are evils. There are two powers. We've got to dissolve the two powers. If we finally come to grips with dissolving the two powers, good and evil, we're home free. There's only one power, there's only one presence, and there's only one wisdom. And that's all we have to think about. No two powers, no good and evil. We don't have to overcome anything. We don't have to replace something with something else. We have to nothingize it, as Joel says. It's not, it doesn't exist. It's not real if it's not from love. So that's kind of interesting when even the good stuff and the bad stuff, it has no power if it's just not God speaking to you. We don't get brownie points in heaven. We get brownie points from connecting to our source and for hearing the mystery of the still small voice, which is a hunch, it's an idea. But it guides us and takes us home. And frankly, my friends, please remember the power that is behind that loving vortex of divine love, the power that you can have. That you think you, these other things are going to give you what you want in a big, powerful way in this world, but they don't hold a candle to what God has in store for you as a power. He knows your every thought. He knows your every need. You are on the path. You can't get off it. There's no getting off it. Once miracles happen, you cannot forsake those miracles. You're on. You're, you're good to go. Yeah, once you have one, that's it. You're on for the ride. And you only can pray that it becomes more intensified, that you do remember what Joel says 20 times a day, 10 seconds to remember, go before me. I know who I am. You are in me. I am in you. We are together. We are all one soul. We are all united in spirit. And we're all here to love one another. And on that note, my friends, I am going to say thank you for joining me on Awaken the Dream. I appreciate your time. And your joining with me is so important and makes me feel so full. Thank you. <laughs>